Hi, well in this film I'm going to show you my Singer 31K and that's a, like a medium weight industrial sewing machine and it's my latest one I've got. I'm very pleased actually to have got it from a shed clearance and I got it with one other machine and they were both in rather bad condition so I took the parts off one machine to rebuild the other, i.e. The, the 31K. Well here's the machine that I didn't keep. It's a shirt maker's machine, very common model no longer of any interest, frankly, to anyone. But um, it did give me quite a good source of spare parts, so I have stripped it down and used quite a few of the bits off it. And here's the machine that I did keep. So this is the Singer 31K. It's a fair bit larger than just a standard domestic machine. And um, it's cleaned up very well, actually. I've put a fair few new bits on it as well. It, actually, I've converted it back to being a treadle machine. It did have an electric motor on it and that kept blowing the house electrics and I checked the motor over and the wires were just totally shot. So I thought no let's um I did at first think I'll put a digital servo motor on it but actually the treadle's quite nice and what I've done I've taken the flywheel off of my patcher machine because it's a lot smaller than the wheel that did come with the machine. So that slows the machine down quite well. That's the treadle flywheel that did come with it, but as you can see it's quite a large one, so I thought no, let's have one literally half that size off the patcher. The treadle is actually very peaceful and nice to work. The actual machine I've just coated it in some new humble enamel paint. I'll just show you the machine in action, so I've got a bit of furnishing upholstery lever here. About 1.2 millimetres thick, something like that, so it's about 2.5 nearly in total. Um, just pop the foot down. This one has actually got a knee lift. You can work the, the lift with your knee, which is quite nice. The treadle takes a bit, <laughs> a bit of getting used to. And I have to say, I'm not really totally with it yet, but I am getting there. But um, anyway. Quite nice and relaxing with the treadle, actually. There's a fair degree of controllability, which I quite like. You can even go around. There we are. Quite a good tight circle. It doesn't drop stitches even when you do a tight circle, which I think is quite nice. I had a terrible time trying to get this machine back working properly. But fortunately, there are lots of instructions on the internet, so you can download uh, all these sort of instruction guides and maintenance sheets. I actually spent so much time trying to work out how all the bits of it worked that I now feel I'm a fully qualified sewing machine mechanic. Well, I, I joke, but you know how it is. You, you struggle away at something and you learn how each little bit works. Anyway, I'll run through some of the things I did do by way of repair and um, how I set the timing, etc. Because I think that might be useful for anyone else thinking about getting an old machine. Repair-wise, I had to do a few sort of new bits on it. And um, I find with most of these old machines, it's the tension units for give trouble. So they're very cheap. You can buy non-singer non tension units <laughs> um, for a few pounds. It really isn't much at all. And I think if ever you have a machine, an old machine, where you've got perhaps problems with your tension, where you've got stitches piling underneath or on top, if after a few little adjustments with your tension it doesn't solve it, do consider a new tension unit. So here's a close-up view of the tension assembly and there's a little tension spring. Now the idea of this unit, it does two things really. It puts a bit of tension on the thread so it keeps it taut as it goes through, but at particular points of the needle cycle you actually want to release the tension on the thread. And I have to say, this is the thing I didn't immediately appreciate when I was looking at the unit, but I got it all nicely turned up and thought, yep, that's a nice bit of tension on that top thread. What I didn't appreciate was inside, and hopefully you can just about see, there is a little, I'll try and point to it, there's a little pin on the back of the tension unit. So can you see where my hook tool is at the moment? Where I'm going to point now, there's a little pin there. That pin works off this cam. So if I turn the wheel through a stitching cycle, you see now that cam is being pressed onto the pin. That takes the pressure off the thread at a particular point in the sewing cycle. It's actually when the needle's going down into your fabric. 
So at the moment my needle's going down and just as it hits the fabric, that little cam lever is going to press on that pin and it just takes the pressure off the thread. Now what happens when these wear out is those pins often get a bit flattened so they're no longer opening these washers because that's what it's doing, it's pushing the washers open to take the pressure off. So that's really why you may find you need to, the tension unit on an old machine may look okay, but that could be why you need to replace it. The next thing I'm going to do is just show you the needle timing, because again, on a lot of old machines, the needle timing goes out. So I'm going to remove these, there are two screws here, if I come round, that hold this little plate down. And if I remove those, you'll be able to see the needle and when it picks up the thread with a bobbin. Okay, so I've removed that plate now, so that plate's out of the way. And you can see the bobbin and where the needle comes down. So I'm going to put the machine through a cycle. So the needle's coming down. It goes down, down. Now the bobbin hook is coming back. And that's, that's the point there. And it's at that point. Now, some of these old machines have timing marks on them. And those timing marks appear just here. This machine doesn't have any timing marks, so you have to set it, as I say, by this method of looking at your needle and a point on the bobbin as it comes around picking up the thread to check that the needle eye is just below that point by about two and a half millimetres. Right, you can just see A glint from the eye of the needle there at the tip of my screwdriver and the bobbin hook is just coming into view but do you see how the eye of the needle is just a little bit below the point of the bobbin hook so that's the point of the bobbin hook and that's the bit that picks up the thread so as I say that point on that bobbin hook sorry this is tiny to look at has got to be above your eye of your needle if it's not then your timing's out and your stitches won't form very well. This is the adjusting screw for your needle timing. So just turn it and raise the rod up or down. Then the third thing one needs to keep an eye for on these old machines are these feed dogs. They need to be in time. So what happens is you turn the machine over, they go back and forwards. And the idea of that is they basically drag your fabric through the machine and advancing it on a stitch by stitch. These sometimes get out of time, i.e. they're in the wrong sequence relative to the needle. And what you actually want to have happen is when that needle is at its maximum height, so right at the very top of its travel, you want these feed dogs to have gone back and have completed their journey going back and not to keep moving back. So the best way to do it actually is to look at this little lever here. When that's at the top of its travel, you need to make sure that your feed dog there, which drags the fabric through, has completed its cycle of dragging stuff through and is about to just go down. So if I keep turning this machine now, so I'll keep turning it. It's sinking down and coming forwards ready for the next cycle to go back going back and when it's further enough back that top lever should be at the top of its travel if you have it like that you've got your feed in time to your needle <laughs> time now if these are not correctly timed what you need to do is do a bit of a tricky adjustment and that's on the main cam of the machine I'll show you to retime those feed dogs you need to go to the back of the machine. I'm sorry, this is a little bit tight for space here. And there's a circular cover disc, which you can take off. In this case with all machines, there'll be old machines, there'll be a disc like that. So behind the cover disc is a cam, and there's a screw there. You need to adjust that screw 
So you undo it, and then you get your feed dog to where it needs to be, and your needle to where it needs to be, and you re-tighten that screw. So I say undo it, make sure the feed dog is at the back of its travel, and make sure that lever, the thread tension lever, is at the very top of its travel, and then tighten it, and that will set your feed dogs correctly. So I did think about getting a digital servo motor for this, but actually with the treadle I've got quite nice control on that. It's not a bad speed for sewing and I can slow it down. I mean, I am practicing a bit of this and I am getting a bit better at getting it slower. So um, let's just have one little go with it going a bit slower just to show you what I mean. This is the machine running slower. Oops, it's quite hard to maintain it slower, I have to say, getting a little bit of practice. But it's not, not too bad. And of course you can, if you want to just get close to a finishing stitch, you can do it by hand. So I'm now turning the wheel by hand. So, you know, if you want to run down a bit of stitching, That's going quite slowly, fairly controllable. And go faster, or I'll go slower. And as you get to the end of a piece of work, let's say you can just put your hand on the wheel there and control it so you get to get where you want to be. So at the moment, I'm going to carry on with the treadle. I quite like it, as I have put a smaller wheel on here and um, I'll leave out the digital servo motor, but I may at a later date consider one of those, but um, it's going fine. So, hope you enjoyed seeing my latest machine, and um, I hope the little hints and tips there on doing adjustments helps if you ever acquire an old machine, and please ask any questions down below. Well, thanks for watching, bye.